In this video, we'll learn to open artwork and create new designs based on images and clip art. And so to begin, I'm actually going to select my welcome window. And just to point out, in the recent designs that I have opened and worked on, there are different formats. You can see there's a heart image in .png format. There's the image of an eagle in .cmx. There's a photograph of me in .jpg. There's an embroidery design in .draw draw format. And so through Open, we can access many different types of files, embroidery designs and artwork included. And when I choose Open and just show you here the files of type, and notice all of the different formats that could be open. So many different embroidery formats, many different artwork formats. Now, when you open up artwork, there are two main types of artwork. The vector image, such as the CMX file, which is a Corel Draw vector image. When we select a CMX file and double click, the software will instantly create embroidery based upon the vector shapes. And so all of those, when I use my browser and browse to the folders that are included with the artistic software, there are many CMX files. These are artwork files. The stitching that we see is created by the software when we open it. I'll come back to my welcome window. The PNG and the JPG, these are a different type of image. They're not vectors. They're what you would call a bitmap image. Bitmap images are the typical type of images that you find on the internet. Think of artwork or images that are made up of dots of color called pixels. And this image here called heart image.png is a bitmap or a pixelated image. And when I choose to open that, I'm given an open window option menu for loading the image. And the choices are to open it as a backdrop, to auto trace or auto digitize basically the artwork or open as cross stitch or open as photo stitch. So four choices. Let's begin with open as backdrop and I'll say okay. So I'm given a workspace, an empty workspace that has simply the heart placed on it at the original or actual size of the image. And if I zoom in very closely, you can start to see that it really is a picture that's made up of little tiny dots of color. And so because it's not a vector, the software allows us to choose what to do with it. And the first choice is to bring it in as a backdrop. A backdrop simply means we could use it to trace with our own digitizing tools. So I'm probably not going to do a great job of this, but I could freehand trace around the shape to create the artwork. Now, to be more precise, I'd probably use the other tracing tool because it gives me a little bit more accuracy. But the idea is there that the backdrop becomes something that you can draw on and create the embroidery yourself. Perhaps it's for use in a different technique altogether, such as the print and cut technique. But for today, we'll talk about creating embroidery in this video. So open as a backdrop is your first option. But if I return back to the welcome window and select open my PNG again, this time I'll choose auto trace and say OK. Now the software is preparing to vectorize the artwork. It's going to create shapes based upon the dots of color. And we have the ability to influence the results during this stage. First of all, I could change the scale or the size of the design. I could change the accuracy. 
I could limit the number of colors. I could tell it to not include the background. And so these are the options. And if you want to limit the colors of the background, if you wanted this to be all one color, you could give it a color limit. I'm not sure if I can go to one or maybe two, one. So it's going to make it all one color. Maybe if we try two, you can see now it's going to give me a heart and a white background. And so you can play with this and interact with it and decide how many colors you would like the software to um, pick up. Or you can leave it off and let the software decide what is best based on what it thinks it sees. You can zoom in or zoom out at this stage if you want to see more closely the results. This slider here will show us the original artwork as a layer and will show us um, where our vector lines are being placed over it. So you can sort of see how well you're doing. And when you say trace, it goes ahead and creates the shapes. Now, it's created the background, and perhaps we didn't want to stitch that, so we can select pieces that we don't want and just hit delete on our keyboard to remove them. And we can see that it's created a red fill, a lighter red highlight, and a dark black border. And from this point, they are shapes. And of course, we can choose uh, the type of fill. So for this outline, it's currently set for a step fill. I could change that to be a satin fill. Um, I could take the inside of the shape and change it to a net fill or an applique fill. Um, any number of choices once you've converted the artwork into shapes. And so step choice number two was auto trace, which will have the software create vectors from your JPEG images. Now, if I return again and open the heart image another time, now we can choose open as cross stitch or open as photo stitch. In fact, once we create, once we choose this, there are options that can be, we can go between them. I'll show you what I mean. So choose open as cross stitch and say OK. And it instantly converts that image into a cross stitch embroidery design. Perhaps at this point, I'll tell it to view my grid and not, not show my grid. So you can see how it goes. Perhaps so turning on slow redraw would enable us to see a little bit better how a cross stitch design is made up. See, it goes around and fills in the different colors of the design based upon cross stitch. And so it does, it looks like it's got one, even two different shades of red, and then the highlight or lighter color, and then, well, I guess green for the outside and black for the border. Um, the other option, if I select my shape, Notice here in the fill properties that the cross stitch is a choice or a tab. And when you choose cross stitch, you have parameters to control the number of colors, the number of repeats, and the cell size. And so these are parameters that I can update and influence the results of my cross stitch. I can also change from cross stitch to the photo stitch. And in photo stitch, the software uses four color layers sort of like your CMYK, so there's your blue, and your red, and your yellow, and your black, and it creates an image based upon that color palette, and so it fills in the colors as it sees them. There's also a monochrome option when you're working with your photo paint. And then the option for photo paint can also be done using the paint technique, so now it becomes paint photo. So perhaps if we go back to the welcome window, perhaps those ones make a little more sense with an actual photograph. So if I take my photograph and tell that to open me as photo stitch and say OK, and you'll see that it takes my image and it processes it in a photo, four color photo stitch procedure. Or perhaps we'd like to select that and make it just the monochrome. Now, another thing about artwork and images, and perhaps what we'll do 
I'll just show this um, open backdrop of the heart again. With any image that's on our screen, I can use the tools, sorry, view, drop down menu, look under backdrop to see the backdrop properties. And in this way, I could actually control the size or change the size of my backdrop. And so I can, holding on the slider window, I can make that heart bigger or smaller. I can change the um, rotation of the image. I could hide my image so it's there but I just temporarily don't want to see it or send it to the back or bring it to the front and edge enhance my edges so that it makes it easier to see the edges when working on that when digitizing on that close so that is how you can work with images and artwork to create embroidery designs and other, and other types of projects, such as cut or print and cut.